Ready? We're going to move on. Here Ready. we go. I'd like to call this regular meeting of the Jacksonville Planning Advisory Board to order. At this time, we'll be led by the Pledge of Allegiance from Mr. Grover Lewis and the invocation by Mr. Al Keyes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to serve for the city of Jacksonville. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for that opportunity. And Lord, we pray for wisdom from our city leaders, that you would give us uh, wisdom as well as we go about the business uh, that's set aside for us. Gracious Lord, we pray for the armed forces and especially the uh, Marine Corps uh, as they are uh, up near their time of their birthday. So we thank you there for that, Lord. We thank you for the strong armed forces. We thank you for the great leaders in this community. We thank you for uh, state and national leaders as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. You ready? Thank you, Mr. Keyes. Uh, I'll echo his sentiment, uh, especially with Veterans Day coming up Wednesday. We certainly want to make sure we recognize and thank our veterans because without them, we would not be here. And in some cases, some of us would not be here were it not for veterans being stationed here during the tour of duty. At this time, I'd like for you to take a look at your agenda. If there are no changes, I'd like a motion to approve, please. I move that the agenda would be approved for this evening. Okay. Motion, second. motion by Mr. Keyes, second by Ms. Vanderveer. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval of the agenda, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like. Motion passes. Uh, review and approval of the mi minutes from October 12th. Move that we approve the minutes. Motion by Ms. Vanderveer. A second. Second. Second by Mr. Dorn. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like. <clears throat> motion passes. Okay, we're up to City Council update. Thank you, Council Chairman, Board. Thank you all for, for being here tonight. Uh, for the viewers at home, uh, you'll notice that uh, Danny Williams is not sitting up here tonight. Uh, he's had to resign for health reasons. We welcome, uh, on behalf of the city, welcome uh, Colonel USMC retired, Colonel Grover Lewis. Thank you, sir. I know you'll, you'll be a good addition to the board, and we're glad to have you. And Danny, if you're watching at home, uh, thank you for the uh, almost 11 years of service that you provided. You did a did a good job. I served with Danny uh, five years prior to my being elected city council with Danny on the planning board and always appreciated his point of view, his wisdom, and his cool head. And we miss you. Hope you do well. Hope you recover well. And uh, we're thinking of you. So with that said, um, uh, from a business standpoint, uh, Mr. Chairman, the only thing that we have recently uh, worked on was that rezoning, uh, that MAP amendment, that zoning request. Uh, if you recall, it was on Piney Green Road. It was an old, ch it looked like it had been a built for a church, but it had never really been occupied, and it was sitting there. It's been abandoned for several years, and uh, we've rezoned that property um, from RA 20, uh, or residential 20, to a uh, uh, commercial corridor type of uh, position there along Piney Green Road. And if you recall, that's on the, the 24, almost to the 24 side. So any questions? That's all I have, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and, and again, Danny, if you're listening, uh, give us a call. We need a, another Danny Williams joke. So um, at this time, there being no old business, we'll go to new business. Who's up?
as the, we wait for the teleprompter to catch up with us, I will introduce it. It, it is a special use permit and type three site plan for a telecommunication tower at 900 Ramsey Road. The applicant is Towercom or LLC. You'll note the location on the screen before you in orange. Um, there we go, sorry. This is an aerial, aerial photography of the site. You'll notice that it's currently undevelopment, undeveloped. Uh, the property is zoned residential single family 20. And again, in this, um, in this zone, uh, towers, new towers are a special use. Therefore, they are before you tonight. Properties to the north and west of this property are also zoned RSF7 and used for single family homes. It is bordered to the west by undeveloped property and as well as a single family dwelling on another parcel zoned uh, RSF20. To the south across, across Ramsey Road, the property is zoned RSF10, used for single family homes, and to the east by property in Onslow County's planning and zoning jurisdiction as well as undeveloped property, also zoned RSF-20. Just a quick rundown on the proposed tower. It is 150 feet in height on a 2.9 acre tract of land. Uh, the total square footage of the site would be 339 feet. Uh, we have been in communication with New River Marine Corps Air Station, and as typical with a tower, they want a red warning light on this tower at night. It does not meet the criteria for any other lighting. Um, their plans show that, but we are also keeping it as a condition uh, for their preference. <clears throat> Staff has recommended approval of this request with findings of fact A, C, E, F, and G being found in the affirmative. Findings of fact B and D will be finding the affirmative when the requested conditions found in your agenda item uh, and they are related to corrections of the site plan, fire access, and the red light. Um, they will be found in the affirmative when they are addressed. Representatives from Towercom are present to answer any questions as well as staff that you may have regarding this request. I have a question overall in the overall uh, scheme of things when the property is developed in the future around the tower will there be any restrictions on the sing single housing units that will be going up around the tower anything developed on that parcel um, if it is a single family would not be allowed in the fall zone um, but there is potential for development, um, but at this time I don't know how how that would occur. But the fall zone is being taken into consideration. Yes, sir. That's protected by the uh, telecommunication standards in the UDO. Any any idea of what that radius may be? Um, from I believe it is the tower height. Okay. So what you're saying is the fall zone. It more than likely is everything within the property. If this were to fall, it would fall on property. I believe this gentleman's got. I was going to say that it's 153 feet from the center of the pole to the property line. So if it's a 145 foot tall tower with a five foot lightning rod slash antenna at the top, uh, it's got to be equal to the tower height for the fall zone from what I recall for residential zone. Commercial, you can actually reduce the fall height, but in residential, it's the height of the tower. Okay. I was just going to mention that, that our property owner, uh, oh. that, that property is going to be family. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. My name is George Davis. I'm with Towercom. We're the developers of the property. Um, our property owner is, is out of the area. He lives in the Durham, Orange County area. Uh, this property has been in his family, and even though the tower is right in the center, he didn't care because he has no other development plans for this property. So we feel it's a very good site. One of the reasons we wanted to work with him is 
He didn't have any future development aspirations for the property, so we'll be able to maintain that dense wooded area with a 60 to 80 foot high tree line around it on all sides, which will help it blend in with the surrounding community. Additionally, there's a large section, if you look at the, the way the parcel is, pretty much everything from the midpoint to the left or to the west um, is dry, and everything to the right slopes down pretty hard and is wetlands that goes down to a creek. So the property immediately adjacent to it isn't really that developable either because it's, it's pretty wet. So that, that way, we, even though it's not on our property, we have additional buffer to the east. Question. Go ahead. Why was this specific area um, chosen? And the other question is, is how will it, um, the cabling itself, I mean, um, how will that tie into um, the existing um, cabling infrastructure? I can answer the cabling. It is a monopole, so there will be no guide wires or anything coming off the site in any utilities to or underground leading up to the pole with the compound area at the base. Um, as for why this particular location, I will defer to the applicant. They would be able to address that better than I could. Good evening. I'm Dana Pelizzeri with Pennington Law Firm. We represent Towercom. Um, this particular area was chosen. Um, the primary um, tenant on this tower, once it's um, constructed, would be Verizon Wireless, and Verizon Wireless was looking for, um, had a search ring that they developed, and this um, area was right in their search ring, so it's designed to provide coverage and capacity for um, the surrounding areas here. Thank you. Anyone else have any other questions? And, and it, it, and I, I believe if you read the packet, it says even though this is a, quote, Verizon Tower, there are rooms for, for other companies to rent off that. So the that the ordinance don't. requires two additional co-locators, so the towers will be constructed to accommodate Verizon plus two additional co-locators in the future. That way we don't get towers all over the place. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. You have it in front of you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I move that the special permit be granted with option, I just had it circled, option C. Option C, approve the special use permit and site plan request with the following conditions. Uh, one, revise the site plan to address TRC comments found in Exhibit D. Two, add a red warning light compliant with all FAA and MCAS New River standards to the top of the tower. Thank you, sir. We have a motion, but we have a second. We have a second from Dr. Lassant. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like. The motion passes. Okay, let us get to agenda item two. Good evening, Chairman, Plan Board members. Um, items B and C before you tonight, I'm probably going to talk about both of them at the same time, but we'll have to kind of treat them as two separate requests. But basically, they're a rezoning request that are side by side to one another on Ridgelands Highway across the street from the Tractor Supply Company and the IHOP. So both tracts of land for items B and C are directly across Ridgelands Highway from the Tractor Supply Company between Yop Road and Hickory, the intersections of Hickory and Ridgelands and Yop Road and Hickory. Um, the first request is a request that has been submitted on behalf of David Hemby by Johnny Williams Surveying, which is requesting that a 0.49 acre tract be rezoned from residential multifamily, low density, to corridor commercial. Um, as you will see on the aerial, you've got basically commercial development that has occurred in this entire area. 
directly adjacent to the tract of land and behind and then across the street with the tractor supply. And you'll see on the next slide that um, it's in line with the regional commercial, which is our camel land use plan. So it's in line with being changed to commercial. So right now the peak area is corridor commercial. So there's business zoning all over with the exception of this area, which is the subject area for rezoning, as well as the Hickory Hills subdivision and the two parcels at the corner that uh, I would ex suspect that uh, rezoning request probably will come in fairly shortly. So staff has analyzed the proposal for the first tract at 2739 Richlands Highway and in light of the Camel land use plan are recommending that the rezoning be approved as being requested by the applicant. Be happy to answer any questions that the board may have at this time. <coughs> Are there any questions from the board? I make a motion that we uh, approve the rezoning request to uh, commercial board for the property at 2739 Richlands Highway. Thank you, Dr. Lasson. We have a motion. We have a second. A second. A second from Ms. Vanderveer. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. For those opposed like, the motion passes. Agenda item C, once again, the rezoning next door. <coughs> this is owned by Charles Edward Robinson. It's 1.03 acres. Immediately adjacent to the piece that you just recommended approval of is here. So this is the subject parcel. Uh, the old Marita bread store, just to kind of orient everybody, is right here. And Ryan, show us again, where's the parcel you said that was not, you said that might come up a little later? Here. Three over here. Okay. Right there, right there. Thank you. <clears throat> so it just appears to me that it's, it's rather obvious that property being the only ones that's left in there that's not already uh, to commercial corridor. Correct. So just like with the last one, we're recommending that it be changed from residential multifamily uh, to corridor commercial in accordance with the request that's been made by the property owner. Be happy to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Okay. Thank you. All right. What are the wishes of the board? Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that we Recommend approval of the rezoning request based on findings of facts A through J being found in the affirmative, affirmative, affirmative uh, and rezoned from residential multifamily low density to uh, Carter Commercial. We have a motion from Colonel Lewis. We have a second. 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 Uh, Mr. Burgess. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like. Motion passes. <clears throat> Reports. Gentlemen. I'd like to talk about real quickly, um, and that's just to echo the sentiments that uh, Councilman Warden and the Chairman has already said tonight that uh, staff spoke with Danny earlier today and he just wanted to let you all and the citizens know that he thoroughly enjoyed working with the planning board and especially the group that's here and um, would love to continue but unfortunately his health especially with the speech he just he doesn't feel like he can put his best foot forward and therefore he felt that it was best that uh, that he stepped down and uh, so on behalf of city staff you know we we appreciate his 11 years of service that he provided to the citizens of Jacksonville, and he will be missed. But I'm, I have full confidence that Mr. Lewis will hit the door running, and we won't miss a beat, but we will miss Danny. Here, here. That's all that I have. Thank you. Reggie? And I echo those sentiments, too. It was a pleasure working with Mr. Williams. Uh, we enjoyed having him here. He was always here, and he always added to our conversation, so we will miss him. And I'm just praying for his improved health in the future. 
And I'd too like to welcome Colonel Lewis on the planning board. Look forward to working with you too, sir. And I'd like to make sure everyone um, knows that uh, we, do, we will miss Danny, but we do welcome Colonel Lewis, and we are looking forward to a, a great uh, session this year. Hopefully we'll have a lot of meetings. We won't we'll be able to meet a few times and get some business done. Uh, any other business? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. There's <laughs> more. a motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. Okay, this meeting's adjourned.